I'm wearing some of t-shirts so you know it's gonna be a hot stuff today. Hey guys, I have to admit a defeat because, well, for the last couple of years I've been working and iterating on my DIY smart heating system on a budget. And it got to the point when I was uh, selecting different thermostats for my um, system, so I could outfit my old radiators in something smart and funky. And then I had to move houses and now I'm here. And I'm probably gonna be moving houses midwinter again, which means I'm not going to be really working on my heating system this year. But that shouldn't stop you. Why? Because today, today we're gonna talk about a new thermostat from Son of, I'm sure you haven't seen that coming because to be fair, I haven't when they've sent me this one to take a look at. This is brand new Son of Thermostat and you can have it for $26, which makes it by far the cheapest from the bunch. Now the question is, is it good enough and should you get it? You have some time to decide because winter in this side of hemisphere is gonna be a couple of months from now, so the heating season's not going to start probably till October or November. But given that you probably want to buy several of these, well, I'll strongly recommend you to make your decision quickly because otherwise they might run out. They also sent me another Zigbee Bridge Pro because I obviously tasmatized mine and it's running custom software. And I really wanted to give it a go with Ewelink first and then see what I can do with this using my custom coordinator. As this is Zigbee based, you're gonna need one of those. I also know that you can see the iHost in a corner. That's gonna be supported soon. So if you wanted to have a reason to get an iHost, uh, then you can get one too. I'm gonna link it in the description of this video. Let's open the thermostatic head and take a look. That is if I'll figure out how to do it. Ah, there we have it. It's actually nicely packed, I like it. It's all, almost all cardboard, which is also nice. So this is the head, some accessories, which there's gonna be a list of compatible valves definitely listed on the website. So I'll have a couple of uh, rings to add. Let's see how many. Come on, Lord of the Rings. We have one, two, three, four, five. Six different adapters and obviously instructions. What we see here is a pretty standard thermostatic head, which is uh, more or less the same size as the one from Agara. So it's slightly bigger than the one from Mose. This one's a little bit thinner, a little bit neater in terms of like how it looks like, but it's smaller than the one from Shelly. Now it has on the top a uh, rotary encoder. I like it more than the one uh, from Agara, it's very nice, smooth and quiet. And there is a button which allows you to check for batteries or maybe change the batteries, I don't know. Yes, that's how you open it. This is a not button, this is just a release for the batteries. And it takes one, two, three AA batteries. So that's a two segment display is gonna be uh, basically shining. I should get batteries, right? Actually looks really nice with those segregated. Um, so I don't know what all of these means right now, but I'm going to read some instructions, uh, play with it and get back to you in a second. As almost all my previous thermostats, except from Shelly that uses Wi-Fi, this uses Zigbee 3.0 and links up to a Zigbee hub. Now, I've tried that with my iHost, but unfortunately that wasn't working yet. Later on, I found out that support for this device is gonna be uh, added in November. So if you want to use it now and test it, you'll need one of the bridges. I would strongly recommend the Son of Zigbee Bridge Pro. Now, for on the outside, it's a really plain device. You can't really see a display unless it's highlighted. It has this nice rotary encoder on the side that also doubles as a push button. And it comes in a box with lots of different adapters. There is a compatibility list on some of websites, so do check it out. I was able to actually mount it without any adapters because I have one of those standards fits that probably most of the UK is using, except for my previous house in which I had to pay like 500 quid to outfit all the radiators. And then I moved out. Darn, I'm pissed off about this. <laughs> 
Once connected to your valve, it needs to be calibrated. Refer to the sum of instructions how to get it calibrated, because you calibrate that through an interface of the thermostat, not through the app. And once you've done that and calibrate for your valve movement, you'll be able to use it. In usage, it's very quiet. Actually, even having it on the table and uh, turning it on and off, I barely can tell that it's moving. I have to really hold it in my hands to feel the vibration. So you, chances are you're not going to hear it when it's all in operation. Just remember that I have a brand new valve, so that definitely is helping. If you have an older installations, your experience might vary. Now, in terms of battery life, I don't know, it's a new device, I just fitted all the batteries and, well, hopefully it's going to last a season. So now that you're logged into IT at website and you're considering one of these because it's inexpensive and probably good, we'll see that in a second, you probably wonder how many you should get for your household. The maximum number of TRBs that you should really consider is the number of your radiators minus one. It's a good uh, principle to follow because all the systems might actually cause your boiler to overheat because that heat won't be able to travel anywhere and having at least one uh, radiator that is constantly connected and open and uh, allowing for that heat to flow will definitely help you out. I know this might sound counterintuitive, but when automating your radiators, you should start with the radiators that you use the least. That will save you money. You don't want to put one of these in your living room when you're going to spend most of the time because it's a, probably the room that you want to keep uh, the hottest and you don't want to regulate the temperature there. You just want to grab all the heat. So start adding these in the rooms that see you the least. Uh, this way you're going to save the most money and you direct that heat from the rooms that you don't use into the rooms that you actually use, shortening the length of time it takes to heat up a room. You could start with one and see how it goes. After all, it's not expensive, but if you order a couple of them, then you definitely save your money on shipping and uh, you'll have plenty of different well, options to try to improve your budgeting for the home heating. As this is a son of product, first we have to start with Ewing, right? So I promptly paired it to my son of Zigbee Bridge Pro Hub and that paired without any. <coughs> and that paired without any problems. And my first impressions, it actually the interface is looking quite nice and clean. At glance, you see all the information that you need, there is a status of the thermostat. And although it says keeping when the thermostat is really off and heating when the thermostat is on, that could be slightly more clarified. I think personally, I prefer heating and off, but okay. But you'll have access to the current temperature, which also can be calibrated in the app and the settings. Now, it's very responsive. It only takes like one to three seconds for the settings to be updated on both sides, whether you regulate the temperature from the son of thermostat or TRV or from the app. So I find this to be quite responsive. Now, where things getting really cool are the smart schedules. They're presented really neatly with this nice bar. Those scheduling periods actually change color so they get more warmer in terms of color grade, the warmer the settings is set on your TRV. But if you don't have a number visible, I think it's a little bit less intuitive to kind of figure out what your current temperature settings are. Another cool thing about this panel is that you can take that complicated schedule and copy it from one TRB to another, so that will help you setting up multiple units. You'll be able to do it in a jiffy. Lastly, we have a tab with statistics, and mine don't really show that much because I reset the device several times for testing, and I was trying it with different ecosystems to figure out what can I do with it. While it's nice to have an overview of the temperature inside and what you've been setting your thermostat to and how much, in theory, um, heat you are using, those values are updated every hour, so they are not very responsive and to be honest, when it comes to heating, I think you're looking for a little bit more granule controls. I wish those intervals were every 15 minutes instead, and I would well provide to be a little more detailed and a little bit more informative. Looking at the firmware, I had to perform an update to 1.1.1 to see certain options. So if you're missing the temperature calibration, which is also possible on that unit, just perform the firmware. It took about 30 minutes to complete, so don't be dissuaded by this and you will see that option available. Additional options include the child lock and open window detection. 
And I really like the fact that they include a small note telling you how exactly the feature works, what does it look for, and what would trigger it and disable it. Because on most of the thermostats, that is just pure magic and you just have to accept it. So that understanding is really nice. And the last feature is the frost protection, which as the name suggests to me, uh, allows you to set it up so your house doesn't freeze over in a hard winter. Uh, it's never going to happen in UK. <laughs> What's really missing right now is the ability to add external sensors. In this video, I've actually explained how internal sensors lie to you and how you can fix this uh, using Node-RED. But obviously, until this is connected to a custom coordinator, you won't be able to use that. So the fact that you cannot add external sensors just yet surprises me because a couple of weeks ago, they only released the latest uh, Son of Zigbee temperature and humidity sensor, which I covered in this video. So uh, yeah, maybe, maybe that will come soon. I'm definitely going to provide them with my feedback about it because I would like to see this option. Another thing that they could improve upon is the device card. At glance, you have access to manual automatic or frost settings, but you can't really see the temperature inside the room or the actual setting the thermostat is set to. So that's a little bit disappointing that you have to go inside the device app and then set it up that way. It would be really nice to see those values just at glance in a, at the card level. Other than that, you still have the access to all your e-link features. So you can still set your e-link uh, schedules. You can use automation panels to link the activities with the different triggers and use voice controls using e-link uh, API. So that's all it's there for you. But I think it's time to actually disconnect this from eWilink app and check it out with different ecosystems because I am actually curious whether the Zigbee 3.0 as they advertised works with something else. It's not often the case with eWilink devices, so let's try it out. And first, I've started with Amazon Echo with Zigbee Hub built in. It's a new device that I have, so I like trying it out. And it took ages while pairing this but actually it worked. As I couldn't add it as a TRV, I had to add it as a thermostat, which probably didn't expose all the options, but it is what it is. Now I could still set the temperature using uh, Amazon Alexa app, or I could read the temperature from the internal sensor and from the thermostatic uh, setting. Uh, so that was a positive. I could also set the settings to on and off, which was definitely positive, but that's about it. I had no access to temperature calibration or any other advanced features. So yeah, if you're going to use it directly, if you're going to use it directly with Amazon Echo device with a Zigbee hub, be prepared to sacrifice some of the features. I was going to try it next with a Tuya hub, but I promptly discovered that I left my Tuya hub behind and uh, I'll have to acquire a new one. But considering the fact that it's already working with uh, Amazon Echo uh, Hub with Zigbee, I should assume that the basic functionalities will be working okay in Tuya. I never really had any problems in Tuya with those devices, so I think it's gonna be fine. But I know what you want. You want me to try it with a custom coordinator and no dread, right? I had a quick play. Obviously, it pairs with my custom coordinator switches, right? But it's not currently supported. I've tried a couple of different converters and tried to tweak them, but I was unsuccessful. I'm not very good at setting up new devices, so I'll admit that the fit now. And I'm sure with time, uh, someone's gonna actually spend some time adding it and that's gonna be supported. And then be sure that I'm going to have a follow-up uh, video, an article about using this with Zigbee to MQTT because there is a one a very important thing I want to find out. This device is inexpensive. It's cheaper than most and cheaper than other um, TRVs that I've got. But the difference between most and the difference between a, a Gara one is one. This can receive the payloads which tells it to turn it on and off regardless of the temperature setting. This cannot. So in order to drive it, you have to overdrive the set point. And that's really annoying. So I would really like to see the ability to set this on and off just like you could with Agara. And if that's the case, it's going to be really a TRV to go if you're on a budget. 
So guys, are you interested? Are you going to do something about your heating this year? Let me know in the comment section below. I want to know what you're working on and how much would you like to automate your whole heating system? If you want to get this, just head to the description of this video. You're gonna find the links to the ITL website uh, and you'll be able to get one for yourself. Just don't forget to add the Zigbee Hub to the bunch to make sure you have it working. As for now, thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, you know how YouTube works. If you want to find out uh, about my experiments in Zigbee to MQTT, there are all the tools in there to let you get that notification. But, but consider following me on social media. There's a couple of links below listed for you and start a conversation. As for now, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. Bye.